All right, so season one of The Mandalorian has wrapped up. I'm looking at it right now on Disney+. Plus. Thanks to Disney releasing its streaming service a lot earlier in Australia than any other streaming service, I was able to watch this without having to fucking turn it. And this show is so good. I had no doubt that this was going to be great. I mean, I watched the Mandalorian panel because I was like, ooh, what's this? What's, what, what's the Mandalorian? Is that a ship? Is that a planet? Turns out it's a creed. And in the Mandalorian panel, I saw that Jon Favreau was producing it. I saw that Dave Filoni was also producing it and directing a couple episodes, as was Jon Favreau. I saw that uh, Ming-Na Wen was in it. I saw Bill Burr was in it. A fucking um, Apollo Creed. I can't remember his name. Carl Weathers was in it. I saw all this talent um, behind the camera. And I was like, oh, this might be better than any of the movies that we've been getting lately. And I was right. So many people have doubted this show before they even got to see it. They, they were doubting it. I knew as soon as I saw, watched that uh, live panel, I knew this show is going to be good. I'm so glad that I was right because I love this show. This is possibly my most favorite Star Wars thing uh, since The Force Awakens. And possibly, I might like it more than that, actually. And one thing that honestly surprised me is how the show is structured. Like, it's not structured like each episode builds on the other and to this great story. Like, there's not an overarching story for... A majority of the season. The only episode that leads into the next one is the second last episode. So at first I was uh, put off just a tad. Like why is this show not building upon itself? Like we have become so um, used to watching a show that builds on each episode. Uh, Netflix's uh, Marvel shows did that continuously and that's why they released the whole season in one go. So you could just fucking like binge the whole thing. There's a lot of swearing in this video. My videos are not made for kids, just in case uh, that ever came up. Anyway, this show was very different to the Netflix style of doing things where you actually had to wait a week to watch the next episode. And the reason for that is because it was episodic in a very different way where not every episode built on the other to take place in this great story. Each episode was kind of like a short film. And eventually, that's what I came to love about the show, is that it is episodic in that way. Anyway, one thing that I heard about, like, I heard rumors about that um, Pedro Pascal, the actor that plays Mandalorian. By the way, Pedro Pascal is amazing in this show. I love him. I love everyone else in the show. But Pedro Pascal probably probably gives the most memorable um, performance and he's under a helmet. <laughs> like, how does that even work? But it works. And um, the rumor that I heard was that he actually wasn't... When you're seeing The Mandalorian, most of the time, it's not him. Like, I, I, I read some article that um, rumored that, like, 90% of the um, physical performance given for The Mandalorian wasn't Pedro Pascal. I just wanted to bring that up because I don't think it really matters. It wasn't really a thing that bothered me whether or not he was... Um, actually under the helmet for a majority of the time because you you don't notice it. Regardless of that rumor though, whoever was stupid enough to try and tarnish the show, it's still great and he, Pedro Pascal, is still great in it even though it's just his voice for a majority of, for like the whole show. I don't know if you've noticed but I've actually been trying to uh, steer clear of spoilers for this review because this is the first season so I am damn sure that there's a lot of people out there that may not have seen this yet. Guaranteed season two I will spoil the hell out of The Mandalorian but for this season another thing that I loved um, was the main villain and not this guy actually this guy Moff Gideon who, cam who comes in at the very end of the season. I don't want to say anything too much about his character, because I actually don't know much about his character either. But his introduction scene was really good. I just love Moff Gideon. I can't wait to see him return for season two, because um, I think that, that he's going to return for season two. He might be uh, way more of a bigger threat, and I certainly hope he is, because he is another great Star Wars villain. So, I think I've exhausted all my thoughts on the... Mandalorian. I mean, on the first season, that is. Um, so, I don't really have that much else to say um, unless I start talking spoilers, which I don't actually want to do. Because as I said, I want to keep this review spoiler free in case there's someone out there that is watching this video that hasn't seen it. 
And I would implore you to go see The Mandalorian because you know how when everyone said um, when Force Awakens came out, oh, Star Wars is back, baby. And then like the later movies came out and like, uh, Star Wars is back once again with The Mandalorian, but in a completely new way. And after seeing this show, I actually don't want to see the Force or the Jedi or the Sith or anything like that for a while. And thankfully... Um, they're, they've actually heard us. They're not going to make um, Star Wars movies for a while. I've been I've, I've continuously mentioned this in my previous uh, Star Wars videos. So because of that, my plans um, for uh, Star Wars on my channel is to just continue reviewing the uh, TV shows like The Mandalorian and soon to be Kenobi, which everyone thought was going to be a movie, um, but turns out is going to be a show. Um, personally, I think that is a great business choice because whoever is behind Kenobi must have a plan because it is going to be a series. So I'm excited for Kenobi and unlike, um, I have done in the past for the Star Wars movies, I will not, I don't know, I, I, I don't know if I want to react to Star Wars trailers anymore because the era of the sequel trilogy is now over because of the Rise of Skywalker and we won't be getting movies for a while. Um, so... Because of that, the change that Star Wars is, is going, like the, the, the new direction that Star Wars is going, I want to change the direction of my Star Wars videos, reviews on my channel and in the playlist that I've created for it. So anyway, I, I guess like for, for the time being, I will just be reviewing the shows, the Mandalorian and the um, eventual Kenobi series, which I'm actually really excited for. Um, so uh, stick around for those videos. Um, I will review season two of The Mandalorian, um, obviously, uh, but I don't know, as I said, I don't know if I'll be reacting to the trailer, and I don't know if I'll be re reacting to the trailer for Kenobi either. I might, I don't know, but if I do, it'll go in the playlist. Fucking too much talking. Anyway, let's... <laughs> Thank you for watching my Star Wars videos. I cannot wait to take you into um, 2020 with me in the t into this new decade. It should be very exciting, and I have some... Uh, news to come up. I have a I have a an update video coming up very soon. So I'll see you in that video.